Today we are going to discuss about the generations of the cephalosporin. So there is always this question asked that when fifth generation cephalosporin are available still why do we use first generation, second, third, fourth generation of cephalosporin in our daily practice. So today we will talk about the different generations of the cephalosporin and their clinical uses. Here I have made one arrow which is going from positive to negative which indicates that as we go higher in cephalosporin generation from the first generation to fifth generation their activity increases from the gram positive microorganism to the gram negative microorganism. It means for the gram positive microorganism first generation cephalosporin will act better and for the gram negative microorganism the higher generation cephalosporin will act better. So let's start with the first generation of cephalosporin. Here we have example of cephalexin which is available as capsule cephadex 250 mg dose for adult and 125 mg dose for the children. Here I have drawn two plus sign which indicates the activity of the first generation cephalosporin against gram positive bacteria. Then next sign is negative sign which indicates the activity of first generation cephalosporin against the gram negative bacteria. So first generation cephalosporin will act better only on the gram positive bacteria and not on the gram negative bacteria. Next column has a A with the cross mark which denotes the anaerobic microorganism. Anaerobic microorganisms are the microorganisms which do not require oxygen for their survival. So first generation of cephalosporin will not act better on the anaerobic microorganism. Next column includes sign P which indicates the pseudomonas. So first generation cephalosporin do not have good action on the pseudomonas. So mo most of the skin infection include the vast majority of gram positive microorganisms. So that is why first generation cephalosporin are better for the skin infections. Let's move on to the second generation cephalosporin. In second generation cephalosporin we have cephoroxime which is available as a tablet cephacin 500 mg for adult dose 250 mg for the ch children dose. Now the second generation cephalosporin will act better on gram positive microorganism but their activity for the gram negative organism will be better than the activity of first generation cephalosporin. They also have antibacterial activity against the anaerobic microorganism. Now the most of the anaerobic microorganism are present in the stomach and the intestine. So any stomach infection or intestinal infection second generation cephalosporin are of the better choice. That's why I've written abdomen over here. Let's move on to the third generation of cephalosporin. Here in third generation cephalosporin we have ceftriaxone which is available as injection ceplasef 1 gram or injection c 500 mg. Third generation cephalosporin. Third generation cephalosporin do not have a good gram positive coverage as compared to the second generation and the first generation cephalosporin but they definitely have better gram negative coverage as compared to first and the second generation cephalosporin. Again third generation cephalosporin do not have action against anaerobic microorganism or against the pseudomonas. Here I have written lungs because third generation cephalosporin they are highly sensitive to gram positive pneumococci. So that is why for any lung infection third generation cephalosporin are of better choice. For fourth generation cephalosporin we have cefepime which is available as tablet ultipime O or injection 4 par 1 gram. Fourth generation cephalosporin they have very good coverage of gram positive microorganism along with the gram negative microorganism but they do not have activity against the anaerobic microorganism. Also they are highly active against the pseudomonas. So if the patient comes and the culture sensitivity report shows the presence of pseudomonas you all can use the fourth generation of the cephalosporin. Also for the serious infection where broad coverage of gram positive and negative bacteria are required we can use the fourth generation of the cephalosporin. Let's move on to the fifth and the last generation of cephalosporin. Here we have ceftoloxone plus tazobactam. Now, tazobactam has the same action what clavulonic acid has the action in combination of augmentin along with the amoxicillin. Tazobactam protects ceftolazine from the beta lactamase. It is available as injection Zerbaxa 1 gram. 
Now fifth generation cephalosporin are also called as super cephalosporin since they have very good coverage against the gram positive and gram negative microorganism. They also act against anaerobic bacteria and also they have super activity or super sensitivity for pseudomonal infection. In fifth generation of cephalosporin here we have ceftarolin which has all the properties of ceftolazen plus tazobactam along with it is sensitive to MRSA stands for methicillin resistant staphylococcus aureus. So if the culture sensitivity reports says that the patient is MRSA positive that time you can use the ceftarolin combination. So let's revise all the cephalosporin once again. For the skin infection uh, we can use first generation cephalosporin for intra abdominal intra intestinal infection second generation of cephalosporin is a better choice for any lung infection or hospital acquired pneumonia we can use third generation cephalosporin for the really serious type of infection where the presence of pseudomonas is there that time we can use fourth generation or the fifth generation cephalosporins when the patient is MRSA positive that is methicillin resistant staphylococcus aureus positive that time specific ceftarolin cephalosporin is the drug of choice.